Cemetery Gates podcast featuring Xander King and Android Virus. Welcome back to the Cemetery Gates podcast. I am Android Virus, featured uh, on this show, uh, also with my awesome, badass, illustrious co-host, Mr. Xander Kane. How are you? Hey, what's up? I'm good, man. Uh, you know, tired per usual when you get to this age, I guess. Everything hurts a little bit, but I think it's more so due to my inactivity via COVID in 2020. So, you know, just laying around watching movies uh, doesn't really... <laughs> keep you very help. active so right right i on the other hand happen to be um lucky to the fact that i just take my bike and i just ride it <laughs> yeah i can or, do that too i mean i live right on the belt line which is like an 11 mile loop that's literally 40 second walk outside of my door however it's usually pretty busy and like i don't know there's like just kind of too many people on it typically yeah. so for covid purposes i've been avoiding that welcome to the desert man you'd, you'd be just fine out here trust me on the bike paths i maybe encounter one or two people ever oh yeah no there's good lord there's a bajillion out here yeah so I'm, I'm i'm chewing a candy cane from christmas even though this is our january 11th episode of 2021 yeah. We were going to do a Christmas episode, but then it all just kind of gotten, meh, things happened. So. Yeah, man. Uh, I don't even remember, but <laughs> we were going to. Yeah, we were going to. I had um some death in the family. Um, You had uh, crazy fucking times at work. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And we're, you're just like... We we're just like, man, let's just not push it. Let's just we're like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I wasn't in the mood. Okay. Yeah, it's not gonna happen today. I'm like, I'm good, man. Yeah, that we're we're good. Let's let's revisit this. Uh, for uh, uh, let's just start off fresh, New Year. Um, yeah, I'm chewing on a Christmas candy cane. So, so basically, I'm re- I'm recording some new episodes of Android Vision this week. So, right. um. I'm sure, you know, if some of you listen to the show, some of you have before, if you haven't, if you're a first time listener, basically I'm a horror host on my other side gig, I have a YouTube channel, all that fun stuff. And, um, we, we record in my, my, uh, the back of my, my RV, which is actually in all reality, just a little set that I built in my garage that looks like the back of an RV. But, um, I started seeing some mouse droppings in my garage. Damn it. Oh, damn it. So they're, you know, what the hell look- are those dogs doing? Come on now. Well, they're looking for some warmth. So me and my 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 twins, uh, we decide, okay, let's get some old school mouse traps. So we get the old school mouse traps and put the so peanut butter and the cheese on them, and yeah, we go back in there the next morning, and all the peanut butter and cheese is eaten off of the 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 traps aren't set. Oh. So these well. things are smart. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I mean, I did have a few few months previous a hole chewed in the bottom of a bag that I keep in the garage that happens to be my psilocybin mushrooms. Yeah. So they were eating my, my the psilocybin mushrooms. So I think they got a little smarter by shrooming. So, um, <laughs> so, so basically, um, I I've got some poison. And, you know, they crawl into a little box and eat this little green, it's like sweet poison, you know. Yeah, yeah. Just such like um, antifreeze, it's sweeter. Yeah. yeah. So so I got some poison. So Rachel goes into the, my wife goes into the garage last night. And she goes, it smells weird in there. 
<laughs> well, she goes in the she goes in the garage to smoke out, right? Like she smokes weed, so she goes in the garage to smoke a joint, and she goes, "It smells weird in here." And I'm like, "Are you sure it's not just you? You just smoked some weed?" She goes, "No, it <laughs> smells weird in there." And I go in there, and I'm like, "It smells a little funky, but I, it's not that bad. Like I don't know what it is." I go in there this morning. I'm like, "Oh, that's death," you know, just <laughs> uh, it had to ferment overnight, so. Me and the twins are tearing the garage apart looking for the carcass, and we cannot find it anywhere, bro. <laughs> so <laughs> it's probably like an old boot or something. No, shit. dude. So check this shit out. So we're, okay, let's just follow the smell. It's just getting more and more pungent. So it's like let's smell behind the refrigerator in the garage. Yeah, we have a refrigerator in the garage. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sure. So I pull like with all my might. Me and the twins, we pull the big old fucking refrigerator, and I'm like smell behind the refrigerator. There it is. It's back there. So, okay, cool. We find the dead body. But the smell's stronger, but we do not find the fucking body. I'm like, <laughs> God fucking damn it. So I one of the twins, the bigger twin, helps me tip the refrigerator back, and I'm holding it up, and the other twin looks underneath, and he's like, nothing. Just a bunch of mouse droppings. There's no carcass under here. So I'm just, like, sniffing, and I'm like, it's in the fucking refrigerator. Son of a <laughs> bitch. I knew it. So we had to twist it to the side and I'm not, I'm like the dad, right? Like I, I don't wear a, they're wearing fucking handkerchiefs over their face. Cause it smells so bad. And I'm like, I'm like, oh man up, come on. You know, be that dad. Like, you guys, yeah. But dude, like, so I found it, it, it was right on the compressor in the refrigerator. Like yeah, just died. Yeah. Just looked, was looking for something warm. Maybe it was yeah. cold. Who knows? You know, but it, it died right there. So we got it out. But like, because my dumb ass fucking decided not to fucking wear a bandana over my face or anything, and I'm just breathing. I just felt like I had that dead fucking fucking rodent smell on my mouth. Like, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, you just taste it. Yeah, I just, I'm just <laughs> tasting it. I've been tasting it for like the last two hours. I'm like, fuck, I can't get rid of this. I brush my teeth, and I'm like, so I'm eating a candy cane now and drinking water. It was fucking worse. But yeah, so I'm recording Android Vision tomorrow, but it doesn't smell in there anymore. So there you have it. <laughs> That's bad anyways. <laughs> we left the garage door open and just let, let it air, air out. out. Oh, yeah. God damn it, bro. God damn it. Yeah, those rats, so. they love those like little compressors on the fridges, man. That's where they go to all the time. Yeah, she says she's going to get coming. she's going to go back there, get back to smelling like pot. So <laughs> good job, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good job. Good job. So yeah, man. So it's been a while. Um we did um a nice little what shorts show and different yeah. thing like that. So Yeah, I did uh I did actually hop on. Um I did record a show with Scott and Heather uh the Friday Nightmares podcast over Christmas. So that's out there if you guys want to check that out. Yeah, I heard you guys had a really good time. I did, I did. We could put a link in show notes or something for it. Um, but yeah, it was a good time. We just talked about uh, Christmas movies and a bunch of other stuff from 2020 releases and all that jazz. Very cool, man. Very cool. Yeah. Um, I, over Christmas break, um, I think between, maybe we talked about in the last show, maybe we didn't, but I, I ended up deep, we deep dived into the Hannibal universe. I've so, never watched a single episode. Yeah, so we watched the show, and then after that, we went straight to, I had never seen Hannibal Rising, you know, the prequel of when he's a yeah. kid. Yeah, yeah. I never saw that, so this show compelled me to watch that, so I did that. We ended up watching Red Dragon, Red Dragon. and yeah. um, Manhunter. Man. Um, we didn't watch... Uh, Science of the Lambs because I've seen that a million times. Fun fact: I own it on Criterion, Science of the Lambs, but I've never seen it. You never seen the movie? I've never seen the movie, but I own it. So, so. fucking good, dude. So yeah. good. Um, yeah, just just it's a it's it's really good. Um, the show is good, but it's a universe unto in its own, I believe. Right. So Which is fine. yeah, and I was really mad. Because I'm I'm a stickler for continuity, and you know I that's what kind of pisses me off about some you know like 
perfect example like young guns one and two there's no continuity there it's like hey he was supposed to have died hey he shouldn't have di- he's supposed to have gone back east and had a family with 16 kids what the fuck you know like you know so i, I was just like a I'm, a I'm a stickler for that so but once i was able to suspend disbelief on that disbelief on it completely enjoyable show it's 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 it, it, the first season and a half is because it's it's what three or four seasons four seasons i think but oh, yeah it it plays off like you know your typical cop serial killer type of show you right. know, who'd done it serial killer of the week and then it just gets and it just gets really weird and out there and just the characters i don't know if the the showrunner got switched in the middle of the show but um well, I know it was like canceled and picked back up, and it had some issues, I think, in the writers' room and whether it was going to come or go as a show. Um, did you guys watch all this in preparation for the show Clarice on CBS? No, didn't find out Clarice was coming on until we after we finished the show. It's like this complete happenstance, you know? Yeah, that synchronicity looks good. thing. Yeah, it looks really good. So, I'm yeah, excited for that. There's some um, issues with um, I don't know her name, but um, the guy who you know obviously produced uh, the original Silence of the Lambs and Manhunter and all that, Dino De Laurentiis, his daughter produces, and I, I don't know her first name, but there's some issues with her and the rights to Clarice and that whole uh, Hannibal type of thing and buffalo bill so they're not going to be able to mention the show like hannibal right um so we'll see how that plays out but hey either way it looks really I'm, i can't wait to see it. it looks good i'm i'm very surprised on what they got away with um in in hannibal, in, in hannibal as far as <laughs> network television is concerned because it's fucking brutal dude it is goddamn brutal and i i told rachel when we were watching it like kudos to the the effects department uh for that show top nice. fucking notch just really smart just i i recommend it man i liked it we fell in love with it ended off perfectly for us um i knew what the hoopla was all about but god damn it you need to see fucking signs and lambs i'm so surprised <laughs> yeah i did a, a some tv show binging too over the break i i Finished up all three seasons of Cobra Kai. I hadn't watched any of that yet. Nice. Uh, but I'm pleased to say I enjoyed it. Uh, the first season, I was like, yeah, it's okay. Like, the first season, I don't know, I guess it's like trying to get its footing a little bit and kind of doing the nostalgia thing. And I honestly think most of the acting is pretty not... Ralph Macchio is terrible <laughs> as an actor. But I do think uh, Johnny's awesome in it. Uh, he plays... A, I like his character and... Um, I think they do a good job. He does a good job playing that character to a T. So uh, Johnny's awesome. And uh, I like Hawk, too. Hawk's awesome to watch, too. So, But, man, that season two finale in Cobra Kai is fucking badass. It's one of my might be one of my favorite finales of all time. Uh, and season three was solid, too. So good ending. I liked it. Interesting. Yeah. I, need to, I think that's uh, something we need to tackle because I'm on the uh, goddamn fucking covid lockdown dude i will say this uh the the episodes are like 20 they're less than 30 minutes a piece and that's the only reason i wound up powering through the first season because like yeah it's okay and i was like wow they're only 30 minutes long let's at least see what happens in season two and the next thing you know i've watched all three seasons in four days so very cool man um but yeah, legit, write it out. It's worth it if you're if you're having like second thoughts when you're watching the first season. You're like me, because they do a lot of really cool callbacks and shit in season three that are awesome. Cool. Yeah, I'd have to. I'd have to say I was a fan of the Karate Kid universe. I grew up with it. Yeah. You know. So <laughs> watching the first season of Cobra Kai, it made me think like maybe I shouldn't go back and watch the Karate Kid. <laughs> yeah. But then the second throw, and I was like, yeah, okay, okay. okay. Well, it, it's cool because it takes the piss out of itself, right? It totally right, yeah. makes fun of itself, which is, which is I like that. You know, I I, I like it when a, a show or you know something can do that. Um, what else did I watch? I, obviously, I had to watch some. I had to re up. 
uh, or, or re um, watch some movies for our next coming season of Android Vision. So we uh, so ended up watching Equinox again, which was what we covered on our 31 Days of Halloween. Uh, I ended up touching base on Fright Night Part Two from 1988 again, which Oof. it's I love it. I love it. I love Oof. it. I love it. From the 88 version? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. And then... Uh, or the werewolf or whatever? We, we did no, that no, on no, the... No, no, no. No, you're thinking the howling. Oh, is that what we did? Okay. No, Fright Night Part 2. Yeah. I thought we did that on the show. But... Did we do the Fright Night Part 2? I thought we, we did. did. I don't Thank think... I don't know. Maybe. Well, hey. Uh, second chances. Um, <laughs> the Wraith... Which I completely enjoyed. Well, uh, is that the one with Charlie Sheen? Yes. Like, fucking forever ago? Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen that since I was a kid. Um, completely 80s, but it's pretty fun. And then Galaxy of Terror and Silent uh, Madness. Yeah, I like Galaxy of Terror. Yeah. Uh, I vaguely remember. Vaguely remember Silent Madness. I, the last, pretty much since November, aside from watching Cobra Kai, I've been just watching the 2020 releases, trying to find my like best of 2020 list which is crazy because there was a, a ridiculous amount of horror movies released this year like or in 2020 like the hundreds of horror movies were released and there was a lot of fucking good ones it was a good year for horror honestly so i need to get a. I i need to get um i will admit i really fucked off on 2020 horror this year there's a lot of good stuff man I know, I know, and I could, and I, and I'm, and I'm trying to tell myself this year, okay, man, 2021, let, just, just, just do it, just do it, just watch them, and then like I just get so stuck in the old stuff. Yeah. Um. Uh. But uh, what else did I watch for the first time that I completely hated? Blair Witch Two. Book of oh, Shadows. I liked that one, and I've rewatched it more than the last ten years and still liked it. So. Liked it better than the first one. Oh, you didn't like the first one? Nah. Like, I, um... Fuck, do you remember... I don't know if you remember when Blair Witch 2 came out. You could... It was one of the... Um, when the movie was released on DVD, they actually... You, when you bought it, it came with the soundtrack of all the music. Yeah, yeah. Because it had, like, you know, like, Stabbing Westward and Nine Inch Nails and... Yeah. All sorts yeah, of crazy, yeah. like, metal and industrial shit on it. Yeah. So that I, was a big I, selling point. When I bought the movie, I was like, cool, I get the soundtrack? Fuck yeah. Yeah. They did that with, um, I believe they didn't, I think they did that with fucking, um, House of, not, was it House of a Thousand Corpses? Or, I, one of those movies they did that with, I forget. I'm not sure. But, but yeah, I, re, I remember those, like, dual discs. Like, yeah, it, it like DV, or what, uh, CD and DVD. What? Yeah. And you know, it'll be like on each side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, all right, man. So tonight, uh, as par for the course with us, we went ahead and um, watched a couple of films. Uh, We're going to play a game. We're going to say you guys decide which one of us actually watched a porno and which one of us <laughs> didn't. <laughs> Well, let's let's talk about uh, <laughs> God damn, dude. This is look, we didn't plan this just for our listeners. I know they're probably like this is a fucking beaten record. These fucking idiots say this shit all the time, but it, I swear to God. Not true. Not true. Yeah. yeah. Um we um let's 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 okay, first of all, let's go ahead and talk about I don't have a trailer because it's a short film. Um, but what we went ahead and di did was, um, a good friend of ours from way back in the day, the old killer reviews day days, Mr. Uncle Frank, yeah. um, uh, from Canada, da, da, one of our, one of my favorite is fucking coolest graffiti artists, DJ music mixers and short film guys, just an all around, um, cool dude, cool dude, <laughs> very, just a, just a, how could I explain him? I don't know. He he just he's he's got, he's a talent. I I enjoy his shit. You know, he's um, an artist. Yes, in, in in the utmost sense of the word, like in everything he does. So, um, so we watched his award-winning short film, The Creep. But that's that's just 
let you know that that's the self that's the title the award uh, the creep award-winning short film <laughs> so that's, hey, it's it's not no, it's not, he just put it up a month ago <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's not a, but um yeah man it's just uh it's it's about a creep that um so it kind of takes old grindhouse type of feel like he could be standing in your corner and you could know him you know like yeah. that whole weird stuff and um yeah, it plays like a it more so plays like a a long trailer. Right. You know? Like it plays like a long trailer and you're explaining all these scenarios like the creep. He's there where you don't want him to be, where you wouldn't expect him. And it just goes through and does like all these like kind of silly and funny scenarios and um you know, a lot of it's kind of uh kind of homage to like uh other kind of tropes in these types of films. From back in the day, you know, like these 80s, like slashers and <clears throat> and whatnot, which was just really fucking great and fun. Like, I, I'd laugh. <laughs> I just I kept laughing over and over. Like, oh, God, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it, it's 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 really fucking funny, man. Um, there's a there's a scene um, about three minutes and 30 seconds into it because it's an eight minute and 30 sec eight minute, 36 second short film or long trailer, whatever, however you want to perceive it. But, um, where he had, there's a couple, you know, sitting at the, at a, at a restaurant, you know, one you know, lady's drinking a, you know, glass of champagne. He's drinking a beer and, uh, the creep, whoever plays the creep is hilarious. He's just like some, like, he just, he just stands there and stares. <laughs> yeah. And he's like this big, Tall, kind of dorky-looking white dude with a barrel with, chest. Yeah, you know? with a shirt that doesn't quite fit right and glasses and just yeah. kind of looks a bit aloof. Yeah, those weird, like, wire-rimmed glasses that Jeffrey yeah. Dahmer would have worn. And, right. And he just kind of stares at him, and the guy's like, what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck <laughs> dude staring just, at? just slowly keeps losing his mind because he won't quit staring at him. Yeah, okay, I think I, I, I think this will come out on the show. If not, I'll edit it out later. But here we go. Just ain't f***ing normal. I just gotta have it. F***. Harold. What is... What the f*** you need? What the f***? What are you looking at? What? Harold? <laughs> What's your issue? Harold? What the f***? Helen? What are you looking at? What's your problem? What's your f***ing problem? So that goes on for about two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah, the I do think it's. I think it's great that he like censors the the fucks and then he censors <laughs> the nudity as well. <laughs> like yeah. in it, which is why I say it like plays like a you know it plays like a trailer because it's all yeah censored out or whatnot because like it's trying to appease some uh you know yeah <clears throat> some, um, cre- some creepiness. I don't know, dude. It's it's fucking hilarious. He it, it, he. The last short film he made was the Thrasher. Yeah, um, which was, was quite a while ago, right? That was like ten yeah. years ago, maybe. Nah, Eight I years think like ago? yeah, it was a while, man. Six years, five years, I don't know something. It's, it's been a while, while. but yeah. uh, I'm glad to. Have, I'd like to see more from uh, from Mr. Uncle Frank. Um, but this was it was hilarious, man. So good job, man. Yeah, I do. I do love project. the. I do love the like opening credits. So. If, um, People do go watch this. If you watch the opening credits, he just throws fucking everybody's name in there. It's like Brad Pitt. Harvey <laughs> uh, Weinstein. Produ- produced by Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> this fucking throws all these names up in there because he just doesn't give a fuck. And it's just hilarious. Because there's it. like, there's like, I don't know, 20, 20 plus names in the credits. And like, you see like maybe six people in the whole, in yes. the whole short. <laughs> Yes, it's it's great, man. Um, good job, brother. Um, yeah, damn good fun. It was it was fun, absolutely. Love uh, the music. Love the the grindhouse vibe to it. It was cool. Yeah, it it it's just a lot of fun, man. And it's it's right down my alley. I'm sure it's right down oh, yeah, your alley. Oh yeah, sure. Um, and I'd love to see more from you, uh, from yeah. from Mr. Uncle Frank, man. So good job, man. So yeah. Just seems like he was, you know, seems like he had fun with it. And he did it because he wanted to fucking do it. So, kudos. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, all right, man. So this is what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna do your movie first because I watched it first. <laughs> okay. And um, 
I'm going to go ahead and play the trailer. All right. And uh, we'll, we'll be right back. All right, guys, you just listened to the trailer for Mr. Xander Kane's pick on this episode of 1995's Spending the night. There's got to be another way out of here. We're all stuck here. We're not going anywhere. I can't stay here. No one has lived here for 12 years. I was wondering if all the rooms in this house are unlocked, except one. One downstairs. Why is that? What do you care? <gasps> The uh, spirit <laughs> would make us feel sexy. Actually, I feel pretty good. Do you say it makes people kill us? In this house? This house? Look at this place. What are you doing down here? What am I doing down here? I thought a better question would be, what are you doing down here? He's watching, just like everyone else. <laughs> Looking for someone? No. There's nobody down here. Is there something you're not telling us, Dottie? Something maybe we should know? Last night, well, what about last night? Don't play these games. <laughs> I keep going back to the night of the party. The murders. I can't think of anything else. My thoughts consume me. Okay. Tell them about him. Don't make me use this. You'll regret it. And that sooner... Or later we play. Play. <gasps> Sex games. It's this house. What's your wildest sexual fantasy? <laughs> Make love to me more. really is haunted i said i don't want to talk about it i don't i've heard whispers so have i all of us here together i'll get you out just as soon as the rain stops all right there are people upstairs lauren what are they doing up there there's got to be another way out of here All right, guys, you just listened to the trailer for Mr. Xander Kane's pick on this episode of 1995's Storm Swept. <laughs> and uh, not not to be confused with the romance novel Storm Swept. Which, the Harlequin novel. Yeah. I'm sure it's a Harlequin novel, right? Um, there's also, well, well yeah, I was, because I was searching for art. And and the article, which is really funny because it kind of threw me off, was I found out uh, this storm swept, um, and it was a a, a, a romance novel. <laughs> well, this movie was, movie was very romantic. Yeah, she could <laughs> she could have any any man, and she wanted him. And it's funny because it has like you know like those Fabio type of models on the cover. Right. And there's like there's a corner of a fucking like a of a um confederate flag on the romance novel oh, Jesus you know it's like, so it's like it's like a world war yeah it's like, like a civil war romance novel but it's storm swept i'm like all right is there is there some 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 similarity because this movie does take place in louisiana on an old plantation that is correct so i'm like is there some no there can't be but it was just so funny to see that i was like uh so anyways i just had to throw that in there i thought that was pretty fucking funny Yes, it was. Uh, so yeah, storm swept. Uh, these people. So it's a. It starts off. There's like a old house, and there's like a realtor lady there, and she's like, looking at the house, and she automatically gets like bad vibes from this house, and she takes off and leaves, and goes back to her like real estate office and finds out that somebody wants to, I don't know, rent this house or whatever for the weekend or whatever. Actually, it wasn't really clear if they were renting or buying. It was kind of a weird situation. 
where he's like, well, the house needs to look lived in because no one's lived in it in a while. So these people wind up coming to be there and they have this giant truck and they're like, some of them, obviously one of them's like a director of basically porn, softcore porn, I guess. Well, let me, let me, let me take it a step back here. Let's, let's, let's just take it. The guy who directed this film, just so we know what we're getting into is David, uh, I Fra- Fraser. Yeah. And, and he, he's known for, uh, directing, um, late last movie he did was licking lips in 2007. And then he uh, did like bad girls. Number six, the Jubilee of Eroticism, One Hot Night of Passion, Bad Girls 3, Surrender in Paradise, Another Roll in the Hay, A Little Bit of Hanky Panky, um, <laughs> The Pink Lagoon to Sex Romp in Paradise, Breaking It, A Story About Virgins, Panty, <laughs> R- Panty Raid, Wine Dine Me, 69 Me. Oh, that's my favorite one. Bad Girls 2, <laughs> Bad Girls 1, and Sex Boat. Um, so this is... um. This is Mr. Xander Kane's pick. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. And it also should be noted this is like officially a Skinamax. This is the Skinamax era of <laughs> films, which I had no idea when I when I picked it. Uh, I just read the synopsis and was like, yeah, right, cool. Sounds good. <clears throat> but anyway, so this group of people, it's like two dudes and four girls and they go to this um, house yeah, it's and like an fought. Airbnb type of thing, right? Yeah, that's what it seems like. Yeah, um, but when they get there, actually, backtrack for one second. Before they get there, we find out there is a couple living in the basement, right? That's and, how it starts. Yeah, and the dude comes out. He's like, oh, we got to go. They're selling this house. They'll find us. You'll go to jail if, if, if they find you. We need to get out of here. And the girl gets, like, super upset and rather than pack she like lays down on the bed and like starts taking off her clothes and asks him to have sex with her and he's like no we gotta leave you would have brought jail and that's basically yeah that's yeah you'll go to jail for what you did and and the girl's like oh he's never had me this strong talking about the presence in the house yeah Um, and it just kind of like ends there (laughs) and then all the people get there and then they start um a storm comes in and they get stuck there and then they slowly start like all basically becoming more sexual and it becomes like, you know, the one guy is always trying to get girls to take their clothes off or go have sex or they play, play they start playing like truth or dare. And they start talking about like sexual fantasies and it's just like completely sexualized the whole time. And the whole thing that was supposed to be about this movie is like, it's a former slave master that basically had like a sex dungeon and they had like orgies and killed, like sacrificed people and like just had sex parties, like weird sex parties. Yeah. And so I, I guess his ghost like haunts the house and it makes everybody do sexual things. And it creates like all these weird scenarios where these two girls wind up like having sex. Mm-hmm. And then another it's girl. Had, yeah, there's just a ton of sex scenes in the movie. One girl, <laughs> the girl that has the sex with the other girl claims to not have an has never had an orgasm so the one guy is a hypnotist miraculously yeah the, he, the director of the the skin yeah, movie there and them. he hypnotizes her and like gives her an orgasm to him <laughs> through hypnosis yeah and it's, it's just it's just the whole thing is just it's just that like everybody getting like overly sexualized and having sex and then they're like they start banging in the pantry um and there's no real like you don't really get anything about like this entity and it doesn't really do anything bad except make everybody horny and yeah you know eventually shit gets cray toward the toward the end but like yeah they make it to the basement and find his fucking torture fucking devices and shit yeah they eventually get down there with the torture devices and all that stuff and you know stupidity like comes through like this movie is really at, at sometimes I was like really kind of like and I like oh this is kind of cool when the storm comes in and everything you know you like oh it's setting all the vibe and then you get like oh this is like silk stocking stuff and then like you know the sex gets a little more graphic and the scenes get a little more intense um, yeah but yeah. It, man it feels like 10 hours long by the time you get to the end of it though <laughs> it just drags and yeah. drags and you get like these one, they realize that 
there's some sort of presence in there. Like, you know, like there's a couple, like now their relationship strained, like the girl slept with the, or the guy slept with the one girl. And he was like, what? I didn't know what I couldn't stop. I just had to, I just had to. Oh and yeah. She's, and like, she's, That's fine. The guy. she's, she's like, Damon, do you want to have sex? And she, he's like, no, don't fuck him. And he's like, cause she's like, come on, Damon, let's go. And they go to have sex, except Damon can't get a, <clears throat> Damon can't get a boner, <laughs> so they don't have sex. So the, for whatever reasons, he you know he couldn't get the deed done. I guess you know the slave master only works for uh, females to get them all horny in the house. Yeah, and the guys are all too willing to you know uh, accommodate the women and their right horned up um i i, I do want to say that the the girl in the beginning is um kathleen kinmont uh yeah, she's she's the big the big name it's what's on the movie poster and all that stuff yeah so. she's she's the get she's uh lorenzo lamas's ex-wife she was in the show renegade i think she well no, man she was like in the original um i think she was in man she's been in a lot of movies man but i mean she's she was in the return of michael myers I mean, but tons of B stuff, man. Bride oh, of yeah. Reanimator. But she, she's, she's, um, you know, she, she's pretty recognizable if you're like into that, like, kind of B movie, 90s type of, uh, you know, just straight to video action movies or. Yeah, this was support. definitely her, like, her time. Yeah. Like, when this came out was, I mean, basically, I guess when this came out, this is probably going toward the, toward the end of her heyday, realistically. Sure. Because this came t- out in 95, is that what we said? Yeah. And, and, yeah. Yeah, and we talked about, I'm like, man, and I, I think I was texting with you, I was like, how many of these chicks do you think did Playboy, Penthouse, or Hustler? And you're like, well, maybe you should research it. So I researched it, and not not did, none of the women did play Playboy, Penthouse, or Hustler, or anything like that, but they all did sk- multiple Skinamax movies. Yeah. For sure. Uh, uh, the the um, the uh, girl who with the dark hair who like had a boyfriend. Yeah. Uh, I know I catch you fucking around. You know he comes. <laughs> yeah. So sadly she's passed away. Uh, and it was due to an illness. It wasn't like you know any tragic Magic. drug thing or any you know she 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 did pass away from an Ill- illness, but she was you know. A well-known topless dancer, actually, in the South, did, like, the circuit. You know what I mean? Nice. But, uh, yeah, and then you got, like, Melissa Moore, who uh, plays the real estate agent, you know? Yeah. She comes in and seduces the chick. She's she's kind of a lesbian. I don't know. She's bi, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Is she, she the one that can't have the orgasm? No, that was no, another chick. Yeah. Oh, back uh, to the, <laughs> I don't want to forget to say this, because the scene where the guy does give the girl hypnosis to, to get her an orgasm. It's fucking hilarious because he's like, he, you know, he like basically finds out why she's like holding back her like sexuality. And he's like, basically talks her through it and gets her to a place to where she feels okay about it. And then he tells her like, Hey, now have like your, here's your fantasy. Like, uh, you just go in and open the door and Kevin Costner's sitting on the bed waiting for you. And she's like, no, it's not Kevin Costner. And he's like, okay, who is it? She's like, it's Alex Trebek. Oh! <laughs> and so this woman winds up like having a sexual fantasy about Alex Trebek uh, and ultimately oh. like having an orgasm while she's under hypnosis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to, that was well worth mentioning. <laughs> yeah. 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 That was pretty damn funny. Um, so lots of sex. I mean, there's more sex in this than there is horror. Yeah, um, lots of nudity, lots of lots of sex. I mean, it's a skin and max film. I mean, straight there's the a, fuck up. There's a, so there's a couple like small, good like blood scenes. Like sure, uh, like when they do the um, the kind of orgy scene. Like there's some. I mean, it's not right. like gory effects, but they do some pretty good like blood slot like blood splatter with like slashing and knives and slinging. Yeah. It is kind of cool when blood's kind of slinging all over the naked bodies while they're like all hot and heavy. Yeah. Um, like that looks, I mean, that looks solid, but that's about the extent of anything really it's, gory it's, or anything. It's just more like they're being like possessed and affected by this go this like sex ghost and they all just get horned up and this, and they're, they're storm swept. They're stuck in the house because of the storm. Yeah. And, uh, I just I don't get the end though. 
Like, did, did no. Like, so uh, <laughs> we'll we'll spoil it. So I think I think the whole point of the end is like he winds up getting possessed. Yeah, isn't that so? Like, be, yeah, because like you think that like you think everything's okay, and then I think like the kicker is like, oh no, he's possessed. So I I think we assume he's gonna do nasty things to those girls. Yeah, <laughs> and, but they're like the movie those, ends. <laughs> yeah, they're like smiling of like we did it. We we beat it or whatever. I don't know. And then he just kind of looks he's like, "Did we?" <laughs> and like it's like Yeah, it's like, like wait, what? What? And then it just ends. Yeah, there's no like shitty CGI possessed eyes or anything. He just uh-huh. laughs and said, "Did we?" <laughs> yeah, and then he just gives his best Joker chuckle and Oh, man. Sound. Yeah. It's, there it's, is a lot of little funny things in this movie that I'm like, I don't, I don't know if you caught this because it's so freaking subtle and I was dying laughing. So when they first get there, like we said, they have like a big production truck that they, they bring with them and they're unloading the production truck to the beginning of the film and the back doors open up and there's like a magnet on the inside of the door. And all it says is you don't need no teeth to eat our beef. Oh, <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? That's why I love you. You notice those little <laughs> things, but I didn't. I mean, dude, go back and see it. You're like, what the fuck does that even mean? Yeah. So, uh, uh, filmed on location in Louisiana, which does seem to be in an old house, uh, which could have been, you know, dubbed as, I guess, as a plantation type of house. But, um, yeah. You know, I got to say something, man. I didn't entirely hate this movie. <laughs> I didn't either. I honestly didn't. There's, there's, I, it'll get a lower rating for me because it does drag on the last like 30 minutes or the last 20 minutes feels, feels like 40 minutes. Sure. Um, but like I said, I was kind of, I was invested in the the first half of this. I'm like, Oh cool. This is going to be kind of cool. The house is cool. You know, you got these uh, attractive women, Mm -hmm. you know, like every, it was hitting kind of all those keys early on and then storm gets there. So you got your atmosphere built in already. Got some weird shit going on in the basement. Um, but then it just kind of fizzled out. But it's not, as far as Skin- Skinamax flicks go, it's not the worst one I've seen for sure. Yeah, it's not that bad, man. I've seen I've seen Skinamax movies that gave me more anxiety than, like, this did. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but um, I didn't mind it. It's a mid, not, again, it's a 1995 jerk-off film from two in the morning on Cinemax. Uh, right. That's, but that, but that has horror elements in it, but it's not necessarily, I mean, I guess it could be billed as a horror movie just because of the whole possession thing and the blood. So it is, it is a horror movie. Yeah. Um, but, uh, for my money, man, but, but I, I'm going to, I'm going to give it a, a two out of five. Yeah. Um, that's right. That's right where I'm at. At two, yeah. two out of five, I think is fair. Um, two and a half seems too mo- far too much because it it drags on. But two out of five, I think, is completely fair. Yeah, and I didn't hate it. It just, you know, it's a it's a mid ninety skin Skinamax film that has yeah. horror elements in it. Uh, beautiful women, um, funny acting, funny dialogue, um, and that takes itself a little bit too seriously. Uh, and, uh, a really nice lesbian scene. So there you have it. Yeah. Uh, and it is for anybody that wants to check it out. It is streaming on Amazon prime. Um, and it, that, to, to me, when I was watching, I was like, this kind of feels like something that vinegar syndrome would put out because, you know, vinegar syndrome puts out a lot of those like sleazy, um, forgotten flicks. Right. It seems, it seems like something that they, I mean, I don't know if they would give it its own release, but you know, they do like those two and four movie sets of these like kind of skinamaxy type flicks so yeah but anyway that's just a random thought i had but yeah yeah i i i I thought it was a lot of fun man uh, as far as um that type of film so yeah man uh go check it out uh storm swept and uh at, at your your hey do you know your way around here sure do Who's this guy you picked up? Just a hitcher. He seems to know the area pretty well, though. It's almost nightfall. Let's just stop here for the night. Do you know where this road leads to? Guys, I think you better take a look at this. Someone's up there. I saw them. 
Who could live in a place like this? It's insane. Where's your sense of adventure? This house is evil. Seven brutal murders took place. Those are human scalps. What the hell have we gotten into? They're frightened, aren't you? There are coffins in the basement. You're insane. You've created all this madness in your mind. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that trailer of uh, Deadly Manor, and um, this is my pick. And, you know, I, I did actually pick this off of a recommendation from a buddy, uh, um, Mr. Brian Pitt, off of uh, uh, Instagram. He's a huge horror, horror head, and nice. he's he's like, uh, hey, have you seen this, man? I was like, no, maybe I'll uh, watch this. The last time we took a recommendation from somebody you knew, we watched Munchies. Yes, yes, but <laughs> so, this is so very brave of you to address another one. Well, I did a little research before I decided to say yes, <laughs> and you know, whereas I just didn't go blind in with munchies for Mister Mister Scott Crawford, Mister Smoke Show's uh, <laughs> suggestion, which he's also uh, banned. Uh, I would say he's banned, but he's being closely monitored on his suggestions for uh, its not horror okay podcast as well <laughs> he uh he drove us down the he, he he does have some gems don't get me wrong but he did drive us down the lane of watching joysticks uh from the 80s uh teen sex comp uh, teen sex romp comedy about it surrounded about a, a, a video game arcade and it, it's probably rated one of the worst movies we've ever watched on that podcast so uh <laughs> he's He's suspended from is suggesting any more movies, but I digress. Let's get back to, to my I got pick. faith in I got faith in you, Smoke Show. Suggest the way. <laughs> Deserves a redemption. We'll see. All right, man. 1990s Deadly Manor. It's not rated, but it should probably be rated R. But uh, basically, it's uh, about a group of teenagers who take refuge in an old deserted mansion, which is a bunch of couples and. Soon the members uh, the group of the group start winding up dead, and they realize that they're not alone in the mansion. So base so this movie starts off as like you know your your kind of typical foray of your normal teen slasher. You got a group of teens all coupled up, um, getting ready to go to Lake Minnetonka or whatever they're going. <laughs> yeah, I was like trying my hardest to remember that for the show. I was like, I don't. Well, I don't know. Well, so he'll remember it. They end up picking up a a, a very um, uh, suspect um, hitchhiker. You know, he, he he's like a metalhead type of dude. You know, yeah. cut off jean jacket. You know, with the chains and wearing a shirt. But they're all young. They're all around the same age. You know, they're all like college age, early twenties or whatever. And they're like, you know blow a tire cops come hey you're never gonna make it to the fucking lake in time so they decide to do a little off-roading to go like you know to go do some camping in the woods and they find a manor like a mansion a night big house in the woods but it, it's like it's kind of weird because the, the the one chick's like i I don't have a good feeling about this i i, I just want to go i just want to go so she's you know like the foreboding crazy ralph right like yeah Let's let's not go here. So there's not a lot of originality to this slasher film, but but it, it is weird because they do find this wrecked car uh, sitting on a on a on a cement slab in front of the house. Yeah, with, it's super weird. It's like a uh, it almost looks like a monument, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> like built it, around it's super weird. Yeah, it's like it's like almost looked like it's put on like some type of. Again, it's a cement slab, but but on all four corners of the cement slab, you have these columns with like eagles, or I don't know what's on the co- on the top of the columns, but it's like almost like a some type of you know memorial type of thing. It's weird, you know what I yeah. mean? Um, but uh, they decide to break in the house and stay in the house, and they find a bunch of coffins in the basement, which is weird. Because it's not a mortuary. It's not. It's <laughs> yeah. not. It's not a mortuary, and then. 
they kind of go throughout the house and they're just finding weird shit you know uh they they there's a crack in the one of the walls you it know slowly gets bigger like they notice it's the crack slowly gets bigger as the movie goes on right and there's a little bit of intrigue you know like weird stuff going on so the first girl ends up dying Oh, they also picked up a hitchhiker. I don't know if you said that. I don't... Yeah, yeah, I said they picked up okay. the hitchhiker, the, okay. the the hitchhiker guy, and he's like, he's like too low, you know. Like he, he, you know, they they all stay in the house. Like he he kicks the door in the house, and it's like let's just stay in here. So they're staying in this deadly manner. Um, not a lot to this. I mean, there are some some some. They find pictures in the wall of like this nude lady who's really beautiful. And it's like everywhere though, like. And yeah. Every wall in the damn house, there's pictures of this woman. Yeah, naked. Like, yeah. but old school, like old school pictures, like not like classy, not classy. like penthouse. Yeah, she's she's classy. She's she's sitting there and and, and like you know black and white type of pictures. Um, but they're going through the house and peep the the couples. Um. You know, uh, we're 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 getting ready to go to bed. You know, and we're getting ready to you know let's have sex. You know, and all that. So it it does play out like your typical teenage fucking slasher. Yeah. Um, and you have a, a a sex scene that's a dream sex scene. Right. And he, which is so, is that's that scene is super awkward. I don't know if you paid any attention to, but like I think I totally got the vibe that the actress was like not into it and was like self policing the male actor. Like he would get like, like he would like kiss her neck and go like down her chest and he would like get like her side boob and he'd try to like get over her nipple and she like pushes his head away. Yeah, and brings then, like, his brings his head up back up. Yeah, and then like he would put his like her put his hands all over her body and try to come up on her. She'd push pull his hand off to the side so then he was like awkwardly like rubbing her sides and not touching. I was like, this is awkward and I feel bad for watching this. Yeah, it was weird, but she it w- w- she was really pretty. Um, yeah, absolutely. She, she was really pretty. She had a, gr- a great body, and and w- and so like I'm watching this, and I'm like, dude, did we fucking we pick the fucking same movies again? You know what I mean? Like, because <laughs> they're in this fucking house, and they're stuck in this house because of a storm, yeah. you know, and they <laughs> and can't leave. And now there's sex. <laughs> and now there's sex, and there's naked chicks everywhere again, and he's having an erotic dream about this lady on the walls. And it's like, and, the, and you know, there's breasts and there's butts and, you know, all that. So it's not like a tame type of real quick boob shot. You know what I mean? They're, yeah. It's a, it's a love scene. And I'm like, God damn it, we picked the same fucking shit again. But <laughs> so you have your normal, your normal trope of cast of characters. You got the bad boys. You got the fucking the jokester. And then you got like, you know, the the other jokester. But they're all coupled up. And then and then. It almost plays off like the guy who's having the sex scene is kind of going to be like the last, like the instead of the last woman, like the the, the, right, final, yeah, the, the, the final dude, the yeah. fi- the final dude. But we thought it, he was going to be the final dude, but that doesn't end up working out. Like, but it does play off because he does carry a lot of the movie by himself. Absolutely, yeah. And which was kind of different. I mean, the guy does, you know, so you, they, they they get you attached to that character a little bit. So it's kind of sad to see him go. So we got a lot of knife slashings in this, and this is pretty much how all the death is done in this movie is with a knife. Um, a lot of thro- all throat, throat cutting pretty much. Right. Yeah. That's uh, it. There's no, I don't think there's anything else other than throat cutting. Yeah. And, and, you know, you got your typical gag. A lot of the deaths are off screen. Some of them aren't, but they're like your typical throat, sla- throat slashing gags. So there's got to be like, you know, maybe six or seven of them in this movie. Um, and then, you know, dun, dun, dun. You know, the, the, I don't really want to give too much away, but, you know, the couples throughout the movie start getting picked off one by one. And then as like weird things happen throughout the movie, like the car horn starts honking outside the car that's in that 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 concrete on top of that concrete slab that's preserved that we talked about so it's like drawing their attention away from the house like what the fuck you know so it's like a trap right so somebody's yeah. drawn them out there to kill them but what we find um throughout the movie is you know a, a, a couple the couple that makes it out at the end because everybody's pretty much dead they get picked up on the road because they're hitchhiking, and the guy is taking them back to the house. 
and he's like this English, you know, well-to-do gentleman driving a nice car. He's elderly, and he ends up cutting the dude, the final dude's throat, and then the girl's alive, and they go to the house and like, oh yeah, and earlier in the movie they find scalps. Remember in jars? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who collects scalps? A fucking yeah. weirdo. <laughs> yeah, and then they, and then, and then like. All these bodies come piling out of the crack in the wall when the girl goes back to the house. And she's like, well, I don't want to die. Why do you want to come in? So Which basically, is funny because the first one that comes out is clearly a mannequin. And the right. second one is actually like a body, like a, somebody in makeup with a body. I'm like, why did a mannequin come through? Right. And, and then, then. So, <laughs> so then we find that the late that there's a lady in there who's horribly disfigured, um, who has the same bright curly red hair that was the chick in the, in the love scene. And then we find out she's the one nude one in the pictures. And basically it boils down to, they were, they're a couple, they were harassed. They got drove off the road. She became disfigured and they just slowly started like picking people off who drove down that road, I guess that that's what it seemed like to me. And then the car, uh, the car that was preserved there was the car that they wrecked in. So, right. so, um, not entirely original, but kind of original as far as the, 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 um, the story is how it, how it, the, the execution, you know, right towards the end, the, the story was, it was definitely original, but, um, you know, the lady did look pretty scary. She had like one eye and her teeth were all fucked up and, and yeah, her, they, for sure. They made her voice a little bit deeper, you know, on post production yeah. probably. So when she talked, she she sounded really mean and weird and demonic. But um, had a wandering eye. Yeah, just one eye. She almost looked like Jason Voorhees a little bit. It was weird. But yeah, man. Um, so there you have it. I mean, it's pretty much your 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 typical formulaic slasher film. Uh, you know. The couples die off and the teenagers die off and there's a final girl and we find out who did it and, you know, they get arrested and it's a disfigured lady and her husband and and it, it's OK. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't I don't I didn't really it didn't knock my socks off by any means. Um, it wasn't terribly original for me. No. I, I more got off on the fact that you and I just pretty much picked the, almost the same fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, uh, but um, I don't know, man. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, you know, the way it started off, it was kind of given – the way it starts off and then you find the, the for one of the first things you see is obviously that, like, car in the weird place. And uh, I was like, okay. I was like, maybe this is going to give off, like, Night of Demons vibes, right? Like, there's some sort of weird possession thing going on. Because I didn't, I mean, I didn't really know anything about it, but I didn't know I was getting a slasher. Um, but it does, just with the characters and kind of how things played, I was like, oh, it was, it was giving Night of the Demons vibes. But you don't really get that at all. Um, it's enjoyable. Um, it wasn't, I didn't feel like this dragged as much as Storm Swept. Uh, but I, I think I was less entertained overall by this like there's a few okay scenes in this one but you know you just get tired of that cutaway one trick kill right like i mean okay cool throat slash that's it you know it just kind of gets boring and whatnot but i did think the makeup on the lady that deformed is really good um and i thought the guy that played her husband did a really good job of being like the creepy old dude like honestly he was probably the, he's the best actor in the whole thing if you want to look at Sure. Yeah. Look at that in particular. Like he was, he 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 nailed that part. Um, I enjoyed I enjoyed that. So, but you know, all in all, I, I mean, I would still probably rate it. Um, it's probably a two out of five as well for me, even though I had more fun with um, Storm Swept. But I don't know, one and a half seems too low, right? Yeah, I I would give it. I'm gonna give it a two as well. Yeah. Like, I think what, there's enough that, yeah, there's just, they're, they're just different types of movies, I guess. Have yeah. I'm rating. Yeah. They're different. I mean, one's, one's like a haunted, you know, you like your movie was like a haunted erotica type of movie. And then this movie was straight in your face slasher that was kind of poorly executed. 
<laughs> in, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I think with that being said, I mean, it's, it's fair to say that for me, again, I, I would give, give this one for my pick on this one would definitely be a, a, a two out of five. There was just a lot of missed opportunities in it, in my opinion. Um, yeah. I get that it's a low budget fucking film. I get the fact that, you know, that what they were trying to do, um, but you know, I just feel like maybe a little bit more could have been put into the uh, to the um, makeup department. A little bit more, a little bit more better kills. Um, yeah, like I guess there's an argument to be made that you know it's just a, a random angry woman that's just kind of psychotic. So like, how crazy in depth would her kills be? You know, like wielding a knife is about all maybe they you know i don't know yeah it, like she's not she's just like a vengeful woman she's not gonna like do crazy kills she's just gonna the knife is quick and easy so she does it so i guess yeah. you could make that argument but well did and did he do it did the husband do it or did she do it or did they did they separately do it but, we don't really know well i know that she does at least two of them because she's the one in the giant cape Right, right. So and then I, when you and see he, the cape on screen, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's her. But the other ones, we don't necessarily see who does it. We just see a hand. So I guess he could have done it too. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think they both did it. Because obviously, naturally, at the end, when he slashes the dude's throat in the back of the car, it's him, right? So Yeah. But, um, yeah, so it, it's it's okay. At the end, the end did kind of play off a little bit like a Scooby-Doo type of film. Oh, it kind of did, yeah. <laughs> it kind of did. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, man. I think for that film, definitely a two out of five for me, and then and then on yours is a two out of five. Is that what you would give it? Yep, for sure. Cool. But I still, like I said, I had more fun watching Stormswept. I did too. And it actually made me wanted to watch. Um, there's a flick from the early 2000s called Flesh for the Beast. Which is like, uh, it was directed by, I can't remember the guy's name, but it was his first, I think his name was Terry West, maybe. I could be wrong. I'll, um, I'll check that. But anyways, he all he directed before was basically porno, and he wanted to make a horror movie. Um, and he made Flesh for the Beast, and it has, uh, Buckethead did all the music for it. <laughs> oh, very cool. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's actually a pretty cool little, like, uh, haunted... Like, a paranormal team goes to, like, check out this, like, mansion, and, of course, you know, it becomes this, like, weird sexual erotic demon thing. Uh, but it's very much so in the vein of uh, Storm Swept, but better. <laughs> so. And, and it, this is what I love about our shows, because we don't fucking bat an eye. Like, it's like, that's our pick. We're doing it. You know? <laughs> yeah, here we are. <laughs> here we are. That's it. We're committed. We are committed. So... Um, yeah, man, uh, we hope you guys enjoyed, uh, we will be back, uh, I don't know, in a couple of weeks, maybe. I'm yeah. Thinking. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll be, we'll be back into a regular schedule now. So yes. And I don't have COVID. Yay. I guess on what I haven't gotten it yet. So yes. Well, from what, you know, from what I've heard, uh, my, like my daughter-in-law has it, my son has it, her brother has it. And they're just like, it just, it really is a, sh it sucks. It's a really shitty, it's a really shitty fucking cold and a fucking flu. And just take care of yourselves, man. And the people that are high risk, take care of them, especially because it's, it's really hitting them hard. Yeah. Like I told you, like I've lost two family members to it already. So yeah. So if you're healthy, skin close, if you're healthy, that, that, you know, take take care of yourself, but also take care of others, man. That's all we can say, really. Yep. All right. I love you, brother. Love I will see you, man. You. Enjoy you your. You still eating that fucking candy cane? No, she brought me. Uh, she brought me some lasagna. Ah. Does Maybe it tastes like dead rat. I'm I'm kind of lifting it up to see if there's a tail in the, <laughs> the layers of the lasagna. You're like, I can smell it. Did you put it in here? Yeah. <laughs> oh God, dude. That's the worst. Waste, I mean, I've encountered dead not, animals. <laughs> I do have to close the, the the show without a really funny with, with a really funny story though. When I was in high school, 
which was probably around the time that uh, um, this movie came out, Storm Swept. Probably, yeah, I would say around that time. Um, we would go to this lady's house that lived in a trailer park because we could go to her house and smoke weed. <laughs> but we could also go to her house and we could we would give her money to buy beer. But she says, as long as you guys drank here and didn't drive. So I think right. she just like, you know, liked and it was a trailer. I mean, she was just you know, it was a trailer park. Yeah. So I think she just liked the company, right? Just, yeah, like as long as you guys aren't assholes and you don't yeah. drive, we're fine. Yeah. So she'd buy us beer and we'd smoke weed in her fucking house. And we went over there one time and one of us had the balls to ask her one time, what the fuck is that goddamn smell? <laughs> Which was pretty much the same smell from today, right? The, yeah. The, the dead mite. Yeah. And she goes, well, funny you mention it. I inherited this trailer from my mom who passed away. This is my only place to live. You know, I, I paid the fucking $200 rent for the fucking, the, the, the lot every month. Yeah. And, um, I had a cat that went up into my ducks and died. And I, I don't have the money to, uh, strip apart my trailer and get him out of the ducks. So here we are. So here we are. <laughs> the smell of fucking dead cat stoned off and drunk off of her asses. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's so, funny and sad. Yes, it is. So, yeah, I'll close the show out with that. We'll see you guys on the flip. <laughs> see ya. All right. Good night. All right. We'll stop. You've been listening to the Cemetery Gates podcast featuring Android Virus and Xander Kane. Follow us on Twitter at Android Virus, at Xander underscore Kane, and at Cemetery Gates 66.